Coming up on Torrance Today, Torrance City Council welcomed the public back into the council chambers for the first time in months. Learn about a free weekly workout at the Delamo Fashion Center, and Torrance continues to grow as a hotspot for craft breweries as another company moves to our city. All this and more coming up right now on Torrance Today. Welcome to Torrance Today. I'm Lauren LaBruna. It's 4 p.m. on Wednesday, August 10th. I hope you're having a great week so far. Thanks so much for joining us. Here is our first story. The City Council Chambers reopened to the public last night for the first time since late October 2021. At the meeting, council members received and discussed concerns about the Skyline Mobile Home Park. More than a dozen residents voiced their concerns surrounding the rising cost of living at the park, and a representative of the new ownership also spoke on the issue. City Council heard from both sides and provided further direction. Also last night, City staff and Harbor Interfaith Services provided an update on progress being made at the 3290 Temporary Housing Village. Sherry Weaver from Harbor Interfaith Services shared highlights including that the village was 100% occupied by July 18th. She added that the Torrance Police Department and city staff were key in helping to identify potential residents who were chronically homeless and introduce them to the temporary housing village. All of the residents who have been at the facility for two consecutive weeks have met with staff to develop a self-determined housing plan to gain permanent housing. Four residents have jobs, with one of them securing full-time work with the security company that patrols the temporary housing village. And 18 Torrance Youth Council members for 2022-2023 were appointed, along with six adult members to fill commission vacancies on the airport, historic preservation, planning, and traffic commissions. You can catch replays of the entire city council meeting here on our channel online and on the city's YouTube and Facebook platforms. Have you noticed any squirrels went out for a walk at Wilson Park? Apparently, many people did and some voiced their concerns relating to these little critters, leading city workers to take action. They implemented a squirrel management program to track ground squirrels that pose a danger to residents and the park environment. The squirrels typically seen in open spaces and running on the ground are called fox squirrels and are not the species being monitored. Ground squirrels, which the program will manage, live in holes and burrows. The burrows they make can lead to injuries of children and or pets that may fall through burrow entrances. The ground squirrels burrowing at Rilson Park have undermined the steamer railroad tracks and eucalyptus trees on the south side of the park. They often carry diseases that can infect people and pets. The management program aims to responsibly manage the ground squirrel population to ensure safety of park visitors and pets. California is in the midst of a drought and homeowners looking to become more environmentally conscious can take advantage of a free workshop today. The city and the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California will host a Zoom webinar starting at 6 p.m. called Turf remove, replace, or maintain it organically. Participants can learn how to remove turf without the use of chemicals, replace it with climate appropriate plants, or keep their turf while maintaining it organically. According to the U.S. Drought Monitor, more than half of California is in extreme drought, and more than 97% is in a severe drought. Participants must register to participate. Visit torrentca.gov events to sign up. If you're looking to burn some calories this week while beating the heat, come on out to the mall tomorrow morning. The Milestone Walkers Club returns to the Delamo Fashion Center at 8 a.m. It's a community service program that gives people opportunities to exercise in an environmentally controlled area and that makes being fit and healthy easier than ever. The program is sponsored by Providence Little Company of Mary Medical Center. Participants can enjoy working out with a group, get an official mileage card to chart their different distance, and most importantly, stay on top of their fitness goals. The workout begins at the food court area. For questions and to sign up, call guest services at 310-542-8525. 
Well, it's hard to believe the new school year starts in just two weeks here in Torrance, and you can be a huge blessing to students in need. The city and TUSD are hosting a back-to-school drive, and they're collecting supplies through Friday, August 19th. Donation items include backpacks, calculators, folders, lunch bags, notebooks, and other essential supplies, such as lightly used books, dictionaries, and test prep workbooks. Donations will help students who are in foster care or experiencing homelessness. You can drop off the supplies at City Hall, the Permit Center, or the Katie Geisert Civic Center Library. As we get ready for back to school season, public health officials are urging parents to vaccinate their children. Over the past month, more than 13,000 children ages 5 to 17 reported getting COVID-19 in LA County, accounting for 9% of all reported cases during that time period. While most kids experience mild illnesses, doctors say it is difficult to predict how your child will react if they catch the virus. Many children in our area and across the U.S. experience serious illnesses. To date, 1,866 kids ages 5 to 17 were hospitalized with the coronavirus. COVID-19 can also lead to a rare illness called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, also known as MISC. It's a condition where different parts of the body can become inflamed, including the brain, heart, lungs, and kidneys. MISC is treatable and most children are able to fully recover. Public health officials say the best way to stay protected is to get vaccinated and boosted, especially before the new school year begins. Anyone six months and older can get the shot. Go to myturn.ca.gov to make an appointment. Despite the name, Hermosa Brewing Company is moving to Torrance. The company plans to relocate its manufacturing facility following a struggle with industrial zoning conflicts at other locations. The company plans to produce all of its beers from Torrance and even open a new tasting room. The new location will include a food truck space, seating for nearly 50 people, and a spot where local artists can perform. Brewing at the new Torrance location should start as soon as next month, and the tap room is set to open late fall near Smog City and Monkish Brewing at 1885 Delamo Boulevard. Hermosa's move to Torrance brings the total number of craft breweries in our city to lucky number 13. The U.S. inflation rate fell slightly from June to July, but still hovers near the record high. Last month's inflation rate stands at 8.5 percent. Core inflation, which ex excludes food and gas prices, is still up, increasing 0.3 percent in June. Index prices for gasoline fell by 7.7 percent month to month. Energy prices dropped by 4.6%, but essential costs such as food and shelter continue to rise. Year over year, food prices are up almost 11%, and all types of gas are up 44%. On Friday, the U.S. House of Representatives is expected to give final congressional approval to revived tax and climate package named the Inflation Reduction Act, but economists believe it will have a minimal effect on inflation in the future. A new data analysis shows children in California experienced one of the highest hikes in the U.S. when it comes to anxiety and depression. Reports from the Annie Casey Foundation's Kid Count Data Book show that California experienced a 70 percent increase among children with anxiety and depression between 2016 and 2020. Almost 12 percent of children in California experience anxiety or depression, slightly higher than the nationwide average at 11.8 percent. Experts believe these rates were a result of COVID-19 lockdowns and decreased interactions with peers. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy issued an advisory on Americans' children's mental health crisis earlier this year, saying the future well-being of our country depends on how we support and invest in the next generation. Parents have one more way to help protect their children in the age of social media. Multimedia instant messaging app Snapchat unveiled a new family center this week to help promote social media use. It allows parents to see which Snapchat friends their children interact with during the past week without viewing the content itself. This comes as Snapchat moves to address safety on its digital platform and promote healthy relationships with families using social media. 
Snapchat is not the only company to make safety adjustments. Instagram has a feature that allows parents and guardians to set time limits and break reminders for their kids. In order to use the new Snapchat feature, parents have to create their own accounts and their children will need to give consent and opt in to the Family Center feature. The tool is out now and additional features including content controls for parents are set to roll out this fall. Still ahead, it's Winning Wednesday and we'll tell you about a familiar business in town that won a special award for its dedication to quality training and services. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Bring it. Home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. How about some one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry. I'll, I'll see you later. That's it. At the end of every episode of Torrance Today, we want to share a positive story that fits the theme for the day. On this winning Wednesday, we want to highlight a small business that received some much-deserved recognition for entertaining Torrance athletes for more than a dozen years. California State Assembly District 66 awarded the Torrance Batting Cages as the 2022 Small Business of the Year. Assemblymember Al Maratsuchi issued a letter to business owner Kevin Tyler thanking him for years of leadership and services to our community members. The Torrance Batting Cages were established by the Tyler family back in 2008, and it brought sports enthusiasts together at Wilson Park with their eight baseball machines, a slow-pitch softball machine, a fast-pitch softball machine, two netted pitching tunnels, and two turf sports fields. Kevin says they're heading to Sacramento next week to receive their award. Congratulations to the Tyler family. Thank you for letting us know about this special acknowledgement. Well, that's our show for today. Let us know if you have a positive story to tell by emailing us at torrentstoday at torrentsda.gov. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more news from and for our Torrance community. Have a great day.